Hey everyone! So we're about to go on our Tahoe Rim Trail hike and I thought we could talk about all the gear we're bringing and the clothes and uh, so let's take it step by step. First, let's talk about the pack. I'm like a Goldilocks of backpacks. I've tried several backpacks and returned them. I landed upon the Osprey Asia 58. Um, it just has a nice, has this airspeed area, lets air flow through along your back and a breezy weather. Has adjustable um, torso length, although I'm maxed out on this one. Um, just happy with the fit and the size is a little bit bigger, which I needed. Um, the original Osprey I got didn't have any hip belt pockets. This one does actually have hip belt pockets, pockets but before I got that, before I got this pack, I bought this through pack, um, and it's just a, you know, an old style eighties fanny pack type thing, but it works really great. I keep it in front of me. I can keep my phone in it and uh, snacks and chapstick sunblock. So, and then these are, these actually are really small hip belt pockets. So I'm actually glad I have this. It's a little more sizable and I'm really enjoying it. So this is my pack situation. Next up, let's talk about clothing. Um, I've got the very pricey, but very nice and warm and super lightweight Arcteryx down coat for women, I believe. Yeah, it's a women's medium and I'm really loving it. It's warm, it's got a hood. That's gonna be excellent. Um, I hunt for hiking pants a lot. Um, I have a pretty average body shape, but I'm just not happy with a lot of the pants I try to find. Also, I'm shorter, so that makes a difference too, because you either have to trim them at the bottom. And these are really old hiking pants I have had for many, many years. They're Columbia's, they're zip off. They are not attractive in any way, shape, or form. Um, but having zip off was kind of important to me just to have the option. I am super fair skinned, so I like to cover up my skin when I'm hiking, even if I wear sunblock. And this though, on the hot days, I have the option of wearing shorts at any given moment. Those are my pants. Again, covering up my skin. I'm not a young 20 something hiking the TRT. I am 44, <laughs> so I gotta cover up this skin. So um, I have another Columbia shirt, long sleeve. The sleeves can roll up. I can have short, shorter sleeves if I want, but, uh, and it's breathable, light, and it does its job. Um, got a Patagonia sports bra I'm really happy with, flat straps. I have a smart wool, very lightweight cap for nighttime. Buff, gotta have a buff. Lightweight, uh, these are ex, ex, ex officio hiking underwear, sleep underwear. Uh, a sleep shirt that's a lightweight wool, just t-shirt. Um, if I happen to be cold at night or around the camp, I have a wool long sleeve shirt with a hood. Katie kind of turned me on to these. Ad, uh, Odlo? Odlo, Odlo is the brand. Um, Katie got one and I got jealous is what happened. So now I have one too. So that's great for sleeping and just being around the camp. And on a very cold morning when you're starting hiking, I hate wearing my down coat when I'm hiking because it's, I just don't want the straps tearing it up and stuff. So I'm planning on throwing this on in the cold mornings as well. And then I just have some smart wool long underwear for the bottoms. All right, let's talk a little bit about shoes and footwear. So I wear La Sportiva's. Um, they're good for thinner feet. I usually wear a size seven shoe, but I went up to a size eight uh, for hiking. I tried a seven and a half, but I thought, you know what? I want even more space. So size eight for hiking. And I've been really happy with them. Comfortable, don't get, I mean, everyone gets foot pain when you're hiking all day long, but it does, it, they do, the, they do a good job and they have good gripping. Um, of course, you've got the classic trail hiker gear, the Dirty Girl gaiters that keep the little rocks and gravel out of your shoes. They do a great job, so happy with the Dirty, dirty Girls. 
Um, for socks, I've always, I grew up, you know, hiking and getting blisters over and over again, trying all these different things to stop blisters until I got the Injinji toe socks. These are the, the thinnest type of Injinjis. Um, so the Injinji toe socks go around my little toes. They do wonders for blisters, keeping them at bay. And then I wear these and on top of them, I wear just, these are just a um, hiking sock from, I think these are wigwam socks, they're called. And uh, so these, and then these on top in my shoe and seems to do a great job. And then some alpaca socks for sleeping at night to keep my feet warm. Okay, nighttime sleeping gear. Let's talk about sleeping bags. So we have got a sleeping bag from z -Pax. Uh This is a 10 degree grade sleeping bag. It's super lightweight. I love it, keeps me warm, no complaints. Loving the z pack sleeping bag, super lightweight and warm. I've also got, because I have problem with cold feet. I just have cold feet. It doesn't matter what time of year, I get cold feet all the time. So decided to spend a little extra cash on these little down booties to put over my, my socks at night in my sleeping bag. Gosh, I hope my feet are warm because that's a lot of down. Okay, we've got a luxury Nemo sleeping pillow. This was Katie's idea. Katie was going, I'm gonna get this. And I said, uh, maybe I'll get it too, but it's so big. And it is big, but man, I sleep best on this thing that I have. And you just blow it up. It has a little bit of padding in there and then you blow it up and it's worth the wait, I find. And that's all gonna go inside of this stuff sack here. And a huge component of staying warm at night, we've got the Neo Air Thermarest, uh, full body for women, uh, the lightest type. And um, yeah, I love this thing. It makes a fair amount of noise when you move around on it, like a bag of chips, but I don't care. I wanna stay warm. All I care about is staying warm at night. That's it. <laughs> so sleeps, I sleep really well on this. So you might be wondering, how are you drinking water on the Tahoe Rim Trail? Well, let's talk about that. First of all, we are using two smart water bottles. They're one liter each. These are going to be holding our water. We're gonna be drinking directly from it. We decided to stop using the um, water bladder, hydration bladder with the, with the tube because it's just hard to clean. And this way we actually can see how much water we're drinking every day, which we really like. So we've got these two bottles plus an extra third liter of water. This is a Katadyne uh, water bottle that has the filter in it. So this is gonna be our water filtration system. So we're gonna fill up this bottle and filter it into the other bottles. And we also have a two liter bladder that's lightweight that can hold two additional liters. So at any given moment, we can hold up to five liters each on our person for the longer stretches of the hike, but we are planning on going to, along the hike there's, there are streams to collect water and filter it. There's lakes, although you would prefer streams over the lakes. Um, and there's some camp spots along the way that might have water, plus we're going to be caching water at strategic locations for ourselves. So yeah, that's how we're going to be keeping hydrated on the Tahoe Rim Trail. So as we're hiking, we are going to be using our trekking poles. Um, I love my trekking poles. They're Black Diamond Distance Carbon Zs. And I have sun gloves to wear, which are nice on the, just for wear and tear on your hands when you're using the trekking poles. And once again, gotta cover up this fair skin. In addition to the sun glove protection from the sun, we have these wonderful z -Packs umbrellas. They're lightweight and you attach them to your pack and you create your own sunshade. Whenever we stop for lunch, if we don't have a good shaded spot, guess what's gonna be above us? And when, wherever, whenever when we're in open area for hiking and we can use these, I will be if we're in the heat of the day because they cut down the temperature considerably and make the hike day much more bearable. This is about the dorkiest hat I've ever owned. Look at this thing, but you know what? I need it.
I need it and I've given up all my pride and just, you know, other people are out there, they're looking great, wearing the most fashionable clothing and they just look great and young and wonderful and healthy. I look like an old lady <laughs> on a caravan. Um, maybe a little bit of a beekeeping vibe going on, but you know what? I do what I have to do to stay cool and keep myself from burning like a lobster. So you do what you gotta do. No pride needed. Get out on that trail. Crocs, they're very lightweight, they're comfortable, and I will be using these in camp and uh, possibly on stream crossings, just depends. But uh, you know, when you're at camp, your feet are killing you and you just want something comfortable. And these are they, and they're super light. Here's a little piece of odds and ends gear that we'll be bringing. A little seat, a little foldable seat. I'll also put it under my pillow just for added lift. Nice when you're stopping and want somewhere to sit that's not uh, dirty. As you're walking along trail, you might have to go to the bathroom every now and then. And a lot of people go, might go, that's gross, but guess what? You need to wipe yourself. That's where this comes in. It's called a cooler cloth and the ladies love it. You wipe with it and then you close it up and you can wash it and it, you don't have to carry toilet paper with you. It's wonderful. I don't want to carry a bunch of tissues. So this straps to my pack and I can blow my nose. I can wipe my face with the other side. I can do numerous things, wash it. It's great. I love it. And it's just an old bandana. Love this piece of little gear. Mosquitoes are potentially a problem on the Tahoe Rim Trail. So, mosquito net. Not the most fashionable thing to wear, but it's really nice when you are surrounded by mosquitoes, I'll tell you, to have this around your head. Especially with that big hat I have. Beekeeper all the way. Keep those mosquitoes out. I'll do it. Speaking of toiletries, primarily toilet part of that, um, we have some biodegradable wipes that we will be packing out, but they are biodegradable as well. And uh, so wiping ourselves and packing out, um, something to clean with alongside our little trowel for digging holes uh, to do your business in. And we're gonna have a little bit of soap and something to put the used wipes in. And that's pretty much it. That's our little toilet container where we head out into the woods and do our business. The more bathroom oriented toiletries we got here, we've got travel toothbrushes, we've got um, some stick lotion, Advil, which is known as vitamin I, ibuprofen on the trail. Gotta pop that Advil for all your aches and pains. Got some, uh, this is a little spray bottle filled with bug spray to keep the mosquitoes away. A little toothpaste, little body glide. I don't know if this is very gonna be very useful or good, but you know, for those chafing areas, body glide. Sunblock, gotta have the sunblock. SPF 70, baby. SPF 70. Some more odds and ends for our well-being. We've got this cork ball, lightweight cork ball for massaging our bodies, massaging our feet. Everyone says it does wonders. I've got a little strap for my knee if I should need it. Lightweight headlamps. Hairbrush. Emergency little heat pads if we're freezing at night. We'll see. Earplugs. Katie needs these especially because I snore like a lion at night, you know, roaring lion at night. So, earplugs. Gonna be bringing our phones. Um, these are 13. Pro, iPhone 13 Pros. Um, we decided to invest in them because uh, we could trade in our old phones and get some value out of that. And then uh, they have really nice cameras, wide angle lens and macro lenses. And I have this little pop out holder that will help if I wanna film things, I can hold it like this. And then Katie is bringing this little tripod that will also attach to her phone so she can hold like this. So a little bit of uh, electronic gear here. 
Here's our little titanium pot. It's got a cloth inside for cleaning dishes and our fuel canister within. We have an MSR lightweight, lightweight stove. These little nifty plates are actually bowls that fold up. We bought them ages ago. You can, can't find them anywhere now. And I don't know, we love them. And we decided we're gonna use them and bring them for food and got little titanium spoons to go with them. A little mug and cozy, homemade cozy. May or may not keep this on the trail, not sure yet, but uh, for now we're gonna bring one mug to share. Homemade cozies made out of sunscreens. We heat up our food in them, pour the hot water in and let it sit for about 15 minutes and you're ready to eat. Compass for emergencies, little journaling, lightweight knife, first aid kit with all the essentials, rain cover for my pack, and the piece de resistance. This is our Z-Pax tent triplex because we're so large that we need a three-person tent. No, we just like to have a lot of space and we call it our palace and we love it. A few cables with our night core uh, recharging unit for on the trail. Garmin inReach mini to in case of emergency and to track our trail uh, progress. Got the official Tahoe Rim Trail map that's uh, water resistant. And then we've got a few little printouts that have our elevation gains and losses every day. And we've got our California fire permit that we both needed to get, as well as our Tahoe Rim Trail visitors permit. And we are ready to go. We're ready to hit the trail. That's it for our gear. Hope you enjoyed the rundown of all the gear we're bringing. Is it too much? Probably, but we like to be prepared and uh, we hope we can carry it all on our backs for the 170 miles we have ahead. Thanks for watching.